Okay, ji, welcome back. And we were talking about identification with the aggressor, and many a times the leader who is having certain times types of aggression, uh, the people try to be the same in that context so that they are taken up as in group, and the others who do not follow the same practice would be taken up as the out group. Uh, there is another very interesting uh, term which was used by the author of this article, uh, which is a folado. Uh, and a uh, folado uh, basically is a French expression which means uh, madness shared by two. Now, this madness shared by two concept, which is folado, uh, it is like the leader is sometimes lacking the reality testing. Okay. Supposedly, the leader is not on the right track. The leader is not uh, having the right gesture. The leader is not uh, following up uh, the reality. Okay. And just because the leader is not following the reality perspective, the followers, they play mental acrobatics to meet up the requirements of the leader to avoid the aggression. And they are there to minimize the conflict. And many a times they are there to sacrifice the truth, okay? और ये सब क्या हो रहा होगा जब हम एक लीडर को ब्लाइंडली वो फॉलो कर रहे होंगे जब हम उसके साइकोलॉजिकल पैटर्न्स को समझे बगैर उसके साइकोडाइनामिक एस्पेक्ट्स को समझे बगैर हम उसको फॉलो कर रहे होंगे जब उसके हर सही गलत को हम अपने लिए एक गाइडिंग uh, प्रिंसिपल वो बना लेंगे सो so, याद रखिएगा कि द लीडर इज अ ह्यूमन बींग गलतियाँ उससे भी हो सकती हैं और हमें अपनी रैशनैलिटी को किसी भी स्टेज के ऊपर वो नहीं छोड़ना चाहिए अदरवाइज विल बी हैविंग दिस फॉलो ड्यू कॉन्सेप्ट विच इज टॉकिंग अबाउट द मैडनेस शेयर्ड बाय द टू इस कॉन्सेप्ट को फर्दर एलेबोरेट करने के लिए किसकी प्योरली साइकोलॉजिकल एक्सप्लेनेशन क्या है इसको हम फिजोलॉजिकल साइकोलॉजी में एक्सप्लेन कैसे करते हैं लेट मी हैव द क्लिप फ्राम डॉक्टर लिसा कॉलन Uh, who is a psychiatrist and he's she's going to talk about this concept of follow do my name is lisa colman i'm a consultant psychiatrist with the south london loyalty trust so folia do is a condition where one person usually a member of a couple or a family develops what we call a delusion a delusion is a fixed false belief that's well outside what would be Or normal within culture, or is it like a strongly held religious belief? They're usually persecutory or grandiose. By that we mean they're paranoid. They feel people are after them. Maybe they think someone's put a chip inside their head and is monitoring them. The world's a very malevolent place. Or grandiose that they've got sort of special superhuman powers. This is a condition where when one person develops that delusion, that their partner. Also develops the delusion as well, and that the delusions are identical. So they both are have the exact same symptoms, and there's always one person who has the primary delusion, and the secondary person will come to also share their delusional beliefs. It's a topic that has so much resonance. The idea that two people, usually fairly isolated from the world, can almost create their own psychic world that one person can go so far as to go what we'd call mad to have delusional ideas and the other person who loves them and and has a a shared world with them will follow them to that place and and also develop those ideas as well it's very um it feels like a metaphor for lots of things i mean people often say that love is a madness in some way like a a temporary delusion the thing about folie de is that for the vast vast majority of cases it happens within either a a couple a unit or within a family it's within people who have this very intense emotional bond and are often very isolated from the world and i think the parallels with falling in love with somebody or wanting to inhabit their their mind what they're thinking what they're feeling is so powerful it's that eternal irritating question of the lover what are you thinking what are you feeling <laughs> it's um i i think there's 
I think that this is the same for most psychiatric syndromes and conditions, but there's something about it that is fundamentally understandable, and that urge or that desire. Yeah, I can't wait to hear it. Um, I'm really excited. I think it's, um, it's, it's such a powerful idea that can be played out in so many ways, and I can't wait to hear it. Okay, we have just gone through uh, the discussion from Dr. Lisa Colon, and she was uh, talking about the psychic world, right? About the psychic world, hai, that is basically the world which is following. And during follow, uh, that the followers are trying to basically copy exactly the delusions and the illusions as created by the leader. And we can witness this in our culture too. In other cultures, it also prevails. In many relationships, in many contexts, it also prevails. In relationships, in many contexts, it also prevails. In many relationships, in many contexts, it also prevails. In many relationships, in many contexts, it also prevails. In many relationships, in many contexts, it also prevails. In many relationships, in many contexts, it also prevails. In many relationships, in many contexts, it also prevails. In many relationships, in many contexts, it also prevails. In many relationships, in many now the shadow side of the groups, if we talk about this expression, there are different assumptions which are actually uh, prevalent in a group uh, formation. There are dependency assumption, there is fight or flight assumption, there is pairing or splitting assumption, or yet tamam ke tamam jo assumptions hain, ye social defenses ke tor par bhi hamare saamne wo aa sakti hain. For example, when we talk about certain uh, social defenses, there is like splitting uh, defense, which means seeing everything as black or white. There can be the projection uh, defense, which means seeing one's own shortcomings in others. There can be displacement effect, which can be expressed as expressing negative emotions on less threatening target, and there can be denial perspective, which is basically refusal to accept the facts. So, in relationships, in mamlaat, in talukat, in aisa saat, in mehsu saat, in aapas, in बहुत से सोशल डिफेंसेस वो भी क्रिएट होने शुरू हो जाएंगे जब एक लीडर और फॉलोअर आपस में इंटरेक्ट कर रहे हैं, because all of them are humans and all of them are having their own psychology, all of them are having their own psychodynamic developments, all, the, all of them are having their own needs and wants and emotions and perspectives. So now this social defenses ki discussion ko thoda sa further uh, elaborate karne ke liye to further clarify our ideas ke aur kis kis tarah ke social defenses ho sakte hain other than which are discussed in this particular article, uh, we are going to have this wonderful uh, session jisme ke hum basic social defenses ki baat ab wo karenge. Defense mechanisms are ways of protecting ourselves when we have to deal with our unconscious wants, feelings, desires, impulses. In some ways, defense mechanisms actually act as a psychological shield against our anxiety or, or discomfort at these unconscious psychological processes. And defense mechanisms have actually been classified into several different categories. The first category was described as being pathological defense mechanisms. And these defense mechanisms are generally thought to distort reality so that a person can deal with a situation. So while there's several of these, the most important one is one called denial, where the person just pretends that something hasn't happened or isn't true. For example, if someone's diagnosed with breast cancer, a defense mechanism would be for them to deny that such a thing has happened or deny that they have breast cancer. And denial is the main defense mechanism that I want to talk about under this pathological category. There are a number of defense mechanisms here, but I'm just going to pick out the most important ones for you to know. One step up from pathological defense mechanisms, we actually move into a category called immature defense mechanisms. And while these are sometimes present in adults, they are generally not as uh, socially accepted. And if defense mechanisms are commonly used, it may cause somebody to have social problems. One of the key defense mechanisms here is called projection. And what happens here in projection is that somebody puts attributes their own hidden and unconscious thoughts or emotions and actually um, attributes them to somebody else. So if someone is very, very, very jealous, for example, they can actually project out that jealousy and say, oh, that other person actually has problems with jealousy and it's not really me. It's a way of being able to shift one's own um, feelings across to somebody else and identify somebody else as possessing these unacceptable thoughts or feelings. So that's projection. But what can actually also happen is something called projective identification. In projective identification, once that person has 
um, something attributed to them, projected onto them, like jealousy, for example, that person can actually subsequently start to demonstrate exactly those thoughts or feelings or whatever's being projected onto them and actually start to feel that way. Like, yes, I am a jealous person and maybe I'm, I'm going to act like that. So this projection can subsequently, once it's projected onto this individual, this individual may start acting in, in that manner. And that's called projective identification. Another important immature defense mechanism to think about is passive aggression. And what happens in passive aggression is someone expresses their aggression by actually failing to do something or doing something very slowly for somebody else. So it's an indirect or passive way of expressing their anger. Okay, so as we can see so far, we've outlined one pathological defense mechanism, denial, and two immature defense mechanisms. And this is by no means comprehensive. There are many more defense mechanisms, but I'm picking out the most important ones. Now, let's move on to a set of defense mechanisms that are called neurotic. And let's start by one called intellectualization. And what happens in intellectualization is that somebody picks out the intellectual aspects of any situation and detaches it from the emotional aspects, taking away that anxiety invoking emotional part of a situation. So this is really a separation of emotion from ideas. Related to this is another defense mechanism by the name of rationalization. And what happens in rationalization is that we figure out a way of making an excuse and convincing ourselves that we were at no fault. Oftentimes, our thought process may involve some false logic or false reasoning, but it's useful for us because it enables us to avoid blaming ourselves. We also have another neurotic defense mechanism by the name of regression. And what happens in regression is that we end up performing behaviors as if we were at a much younger stage in our lives. So for example, if we can talk and speak and move about and do things normally, we may resort to whining or throwing a tantrum or acting in a way that is much more like somebody that was at a much younger stage in life. Some people might say acting like a baby. And a very similar word to this is something called repression, but it's actually a very different concept. This is, like most of these defense mechanisms, an unconscious process where our thoughts that may be coming into our con consciousness are pushed down into our unconscious. And finally, in this category, we have something called displacement. And I'm actually going to go down a little bit just to show you what that looks like. What can happen in displacement is that an individual may feel very angry towards one person, but because it's not safe or it may be um, difficult to express that anger, they may displace that on anger onto an easier target. For example, if a wife is angry at her husband, she may, instead of shouting or getting angry at him, may actually get angry at her child. Okay, so those are several of the neurotic defense mechanisms. Now I want to talk to you about some of the mature defense mechanisms. And the reason why these are important is that people who demonstrate strong use of defense mechanisms are happier, healthier, and more satisfied with life. So what are these more mature defense mechanisms? These defense mechanisms include things like the use of humor, the telling of jokes or engaging in humorous activity to um, partly be truthful about some of these hidden uh, feelings, but also to make it much more socially acceptable. Another defense mechanism here is called sublimation. So if someone, for example, really has violent urges, they can channel their negative energy into positive energy. So for example, violent urges may lead to them actually becoming a boxer or a fitness trainer or a weightlifter instead of actually going out and hurting someone. There's also another process and think about repression, what I mentioned earlier. It sounds like repression and this is actually called suppression. 
And suppression is actually a much more conscious way of transferring negative emotions or feelings and pushing them away from conscious thought so we can get on with things. But we can easily access those thoughts at a later time. And finally, I want to mention one last defense mechanism, which is altruism, which is basically when we are in the service of other people, we actually feel very fulfilled and gain pleasure and satisfaction. So these categories are the mature defense mechanisms. So there's certainly a lot of defense mechanisms here. And it's important to know that this is by no means exhaustive. So something else that I want to cover is a defense mechanism called reaction formation. And this is um, often referred to as being part of the neurotic group of defense mechanisms. But this is particularly interesting because those unconscious wishes or feelings that are experienced by a person, they actually end up doing the complete opposite. So for example, somebody that has a problem with immigration may actually volunteer to work at an immigration center helping people develop their language skills or their visa issues. So in this particular clip, we have gone through the uh, other aspects uh, which are not actually discussed in the article, but I thought that you social defenses in different aspects of social defenses can be given about orientation because when you move in a social environment, in a social gathering, there is a relationship between follower and the leader, so there certain types of defenses are expected. और वो डिफेंसेस आर एक्चुअली नॉर्मल टू टेक प्लेस उसमें कोई हरज की बात नहीं उसमें कोई इतराज की बात नहीं दोस नेचुरल डिफेंसेस आर देयर एंड पीपल शुड बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड कि वो डिफेंसेस को उन्होंने टैकल अप वो कैसे करना है एंड ऑलवेज रिमेंबर कि कभी भी हमें लोगों के पर्सनल सोशल डिफेंसेस को चैलेंज वो नहीं करना चाहिए The next step, which is uh, discussed in the article, is talking about psychodynamic concepts related to bringing the human dimensions back into organization. उस हवाले से there is a very famous quote I would like to discuss with you that leaders must understand that why human beings act as they do because unless until they don't understand that this particular aspect of why उस वक्त तक उनका जो ताल्लुक है लोगों के साथ वो incomplete वो होगा अब साइकोडायनामिक पर्सपेक्टिव में जब एक ऑर्गेनाइजेशन कॉन्टेक्स्ट में हम मूव कर रहे हैं वहां पर डिफरेंट तरह के मैनेजरियल लोग काम कर रहे हैं डिफरेंट तरह का स्टाफ वहां पर ऑपरेशनल है तो वहां पर वी हैव टू फोकस ऑन द प्रैक्टिकल प्रॉब्लम्स ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइजेशनल थ्योरी पर्सपेक्टिव बिकॉज किस सिस्टम के तहत एक ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इस्टेब्लिश हुई वहां का स्ट्रक्चरल डिटेल वो कैसे डेवलप की गई है वहां के एंथ्रोपोलॉजिकल डिटेल्स वो क्या हैं वहां के साइकोलॉजिकल डिटेल्स वो क्या हैं वहां पर एंथ्रोपोमोफाइजेशन के जो कॉन्सेप्ट्स हैं वो किस तरह से मैनिफेस्ट किए गए हैं वहां पर ऑपरेशनल एंड प्रोडक्शन कॉन्सेप्ट को कैसे इंकॉर्पोरेट किया गया है डिपार्टमेंटलाइजेशन कैसे बनाई गई है हर आर की लेवल्स कैसे डिसाइड किए गए हैं इन तमाम चीज़ों को समझे बगैर इट वुड बी वेरी डिफिकल्ट फॉर पीपल टू प्रॉपरली एफिशेंटली एंड इफेक्टिवली इंटरेक्ट विद वन अनदर Likewise, बहुत से साइकोलॉजिकल कॉन्ट्रैक्ट बिटवीन द इम्प्लॉय एंड द इम्प्लॉयर होते हैं बिटवीन द लीडर एंड द फॉलोअर होते हैं जो कहीं लिखे हुए नहीं होते जिनकी कोई तस्दीक नहीं होती जिनका कोई एग्जिस्टेंस और वजूद नहीं होता लेकिन वो साइकोलॉजिकल कॉन्ट्रैक्ट के बगैर द पीपल वुड नॉट बी एबल टू इस्टेब्लिश दैट पर्टिकुलर ट्रस्ट रिलेशनशिप लाइक वाइज हमें यह भी देखना पड़ेगा कि प्रोसेस एंड स्ट्रक्चर की मौजूदगी में लोगों के जहनों के जो क्रिएटिव एंड इनोवेटिव आइडियाज हैं उनके जो जज्बात और एहसास हैं उनकी गुंजाइश कहाँ पर बनती है तो हमें इस चीज को वर्क लाइफ बैलेंस के कॉन्टेक्स्ट में भी देखना है इस चीज को हमें माइंडफुलनेस के कॉन्टेक्स्ट में भी देखना है इसको हमें टोटल लीडरशिप के पर्सपेक्टिव में भी देखना है सो देर आर मल्टीपल एवेन्यूज जिनको मद्देनजर रखे बगैर एक प्रॉपर रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन द लीडर एंड फॉलोअर इस्टेब्लिश वो नहीं हो पाएगा लाइकवाइज जब हम फर्दर इन्वेस्टिगेट करते हैं साइको एनालिसिस एंड ऑर्गेनाइजेशन को इट इज सेट कि जब डायग्नोज किया जाएगा क्लिनिकल बेसिस के ऊपर क्लिनिकल ग्राउंड के ऊपर अप्लाइड अप्रोच को यूज करते हुए ऑर्गेनाइजेशन लेवल मसाइल को तो हमें इंडिविजुअल लेवल डायग्नोसिस ग्रुप लेवल डायग्नोसिस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन लेवल डायग्नोसिस की जरूरत है और इन्हीं तीनों लेवल्स के ऊपर हमें उनके इंटरवेंशन को भी सोचने की जरूरत है कि किस किस तरीके से वी कैन ब्रिंग अबाउट सम चेंज Likewise, your article is also talking about integrating leadership theories and the psychodynamic paradigm. Or, in this context, me, your author writes that leadership is linked to followers' attitudes and behaviors. Okay. Or, a very amazing thing I heard once. A quotation I heard was that there is no sound if there is no listener. Absolutely, there is no leader if there is no follower. 
तो लीडर फॉलोअर का जो ताल्लुक है वो एक अटूट अंग की तरह का कॉन्सेप्ट है जिसको कि आप जुदा नहीं कर सकते हो सो लीडर इज लिंक्ड टू द फॉलोअर्स एटीट्यूड एंड बिहेवियर्स और वो डायरेक्टली उससे इफेक्ट भी हो रहा होता है जैसे हमने फॉलोअर्स के केस में कहा था कि द फॉलोअर्स कैन बी एबल एंड विलिंग द फॉलोअर्स कैन बी नॉट एबल बट विलिंग द फॉलोअर्स कैन बी अन एबल बट विलिंग तो मुख्तलिफ तरह के फॉलोअर्स हैं जिनको के मुख्तलिफ तरह के लीडरशिप रिस्पेक्टिव में हमें इन एसोसिएशन लाना पड़ता है अब जब ये ताल्लुक कायम हो जाए लीडर और फॉलोअर का तो उस ताल्लुक में जो मेन इंग्रेडिएंट्स हैं वो है होप वो है ट्रस्ट वो है पॉजिटिव इमोशंस और वो है ऑप्टिमिज्म और जब तक हम ये चार एलिमेंट्स चार कंस्ट्रक्ट्स वो इनकॉर्पोरेट नहीं करेंगे हमारा वो ताल्लुक विद अ फॉलोअर हमारा एज अ लीडर कॉन्टेक्स विद अ फॉलोअर वो इस्टेब्लिश नहीं हो पाएगा और यहां पर एक और बड़ी अहम बात भी याद रखिएगा कि अगर लीडर मैं और आप में से कोई नहीं है तो फिर लीडर कोई भी नहीं है और ये भी बात याद रखिएगा कि लीडरशिप के केस में एक लीडर के लिए ये सबसे अहम है कि वो दूसरों में लीडरशिप कैपेबिलिटीज को क्रिएट कर सके जिस तरह हम ऑर्गेनाइजेशन प्रैक्टिशनर के बारे में कहते हैं ऑर्गेनाइजेशन डेवलपमेंट प्रैक्टिशनर के बारे में हम कहते हैं कि उसको ऑर्गेनाइजेशन के अंदर सेल्फ रिन्यूअल कैपेबिलिटी वो इनकॉर्पोरेट करनी चाहिए तो बिल्कुल उसी तरह हमें फॉलोअर्स के अंदर भी सेल्फ रिन्यूअल कैपेबिलिटी वो इनकॉर्पोरेट करनी चाहिए कि क्योंकि अगर कल को वो लीडर वहां पर फिजिकली और टेक्निकली ना भी हो तो वो एक एफिशियंट इफेक्टिव लीडरलेस ग्रुप के मानें भी कंस्ट्रक्टिवली मूव वो कर सकें नाउ देर इज द कॉन्सेप्ट विच इज एवॉल्विंग राइट नाउ विच इज साइकोडाइनमिक एंड ऑथेंटिक लीडरशिप और जब हम ऑथेंटिक लीडरशिप की बात करते हैं तो इसमें सबसे इंपॉर्टेंट चीज ये है कि फॉलोअर्स पर्सनल आइडेंटिफिकेशन विद द लीडर उसको हमें बड़ा तवज्जो से देखना पड़ेगा कि वो किन किन एस्पेक्ट से अपनी एसोसिएशन विद द लीडर बना रहा है द सेकेंड थिंग इज उस फॉलोअर की सोशल आइडेंटिफिकेशन विद ऑर्गेनाइजेशन जिसको हम ऑर्गेनाइजेशन जॉब फिट और ऑर्गेनाइजेशन पर्सन फिट की बात करते हैं तो उस फिट को क्रिएट करना हमारे लिए जरूरी है इसी तरह इंडिविजुअल गोल्स अलाइन विद ऑर्गेनाइजेशनल गोल अब उसके लिए आप एम का प्रोसेस यूज करो मैनेजमेंट बाई ऑब्जेक्टिव का प्रोसेस यूज करो आप पार्टिसिपेटिव स्टाइल ऑफ मैनेजमेंट वो लेकर आओ हमें यह सब कुछ करना पड़ेगा बींग ऑथेंटिक लीडर्स ताकि हमारे फॉलोअर्स एथिकल फाउंडेशन को मद्देनजर रखते हुए अपनी प्रॉपर डेवलपमेंट को इनकॉर्पोरेट कर सकें अन अगर हम इन तमाम एस्पेक्ट्स को जहां पर हम एक तरफ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन फिट क्रिएट कर रहे हैं दूसरी तरफ हम इंडिविजुअल के गोल्स को ऑर्गेनाइजेशन गोल के साथ असाइन कर रहे हैं हम एथिकल कंसिडरेशन लेकर आ रहे हैं हम फॉलोअर की आइडेंटिफिकेशन विद द लीडर उसके मिरर इमेज विद द लीडर को हम इनकॉर्पोरेट कर रहे हैं अगर हम ये काम नहीं करेंगे तब तक हम ऑथेंटिक लीडरशिप का जो कॉन्सेप्ट है उसको अपनी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन के अंदर इस्टेब्लिश वो नहीं कर सकते एंड देर इज नो डाउट कि जब हम ऑथेंटिक लीडरशिप की बात करेंगे तो देर आर मैनी वनरेबिलिटीज जिनका एक लीडर को सामना वो करना पड़ेगा अब अगर हम उन वनरेबिलिटीज को देखें और ऑथेंटिक लीडरशिप के कॉन्सर्न को देखें तो वी हैव गॉट अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सेशन इसको तवज्जो से सुनिएगा एंड देन विल बी कमिंग बैक विद अवर टॉक इन ऑर्डर टू बी ऑथेंटिक यू नीड टू बी वोनरेबल दैट्स प्रॉब्ली स्केरी फॉर अ लॉट ऑफ यू आई नो इट कैन बी स्केरी फॉर मी एट टाइम्स बट इट डजंट रियली हैव टू बी इफ यू थिंक अबाउट इट बट बिफोर वी डाइव इनटू दैट टुडे क्लिक द सब्सक्राइब बटन सो दैट यू कैन कीप अप विद द कंटेंट दैट वी आर पोस्टिंग टू सपोर्ट यू as a transformational leader to be an authentic leader in business you do need to be vulnerable if you listen to what Brene Brown has to say she says vulnerability is the courage to show up authentically regardless of the outcome that doesn't mean weakness it just means showing up it also doesn't mean showing up and yelling really loudly either it just means showing up and being willing to open up and be genuine with people Every time I do an accelerated leadership program, I show Brené Brown's video, The Power of Vulnerability. If you haven't watched it, I encourage you to. It's really, really fascinating. At the end of the video, people have a sense of what it really means to show up regardless of the outcome and to know that they're unique and it's it what it's what makes them unique and special that is so powerful in showing up authentically and being vulnerable. But the reaction I get so many times is well that's great i can do that in my personal life but i can't do that in business so i ask them do you know anyone do you know anyone in business either in our company or outside of our company that you believe is a leader that shows up authentically of course without exception they always come up with names one of the names that came up at our company was tom rothman he was one of our chairman at fox the thing about tom was he was he was intense he was passionate but he was also vulnerable and available you knew where he stood on things he was open and real and honest with you and you knew where you stood with him 
And because you knew where you stood with him, it was, a, it was a, an exchange that sort of happened where you felt connected to him. If I'm vulnerable with you and you're vulnerable with me, our connection is going to get deeper. We're gonna develop a higher level of trust and respect and that trust and respect that we have with each other will develop into loyalty. There's a lot of stickiness and retention that's built around being vulnerable and connected to people. I have an expression that we use at our company all the time. We are better together than we are alone. That just doesn't mean being physically present. It means being connected and developing that trust and respect. Vulnerability is an incredibly powerful tool. I use it all the time. I suggest that you take a deeper look and see how you can use it more effectively too. That's it for today. Don't forget to click on our newsletter and get more content from us on developing tomorrow's leaders today. Okay, we have just gone through the detail of authentic leadership and the person was telling us that there should be some connection, established connection between the leader and the follower. There should be the trust, there should be the vulnerability or in tamam ingredients ke baghair, hamari recipe for a true leader wo puri nahi ho paati. Likewise, your article is talking about psychodynamic and goal-directed energy. Just make a followers identification leader ki jab hum baat karte hain, to usme employees ki, followers ki job satisfaction, unki organization ke saath commitment and engagement, unka positive organizational outcome generate karna, aur unke risk-taking behavior ko incorporate karna, wo leader ke liye bohot zaruri hai. Likewise, emotional intelligence ki jab hum baat karte hain, to emotional intelligence ke case mein yaad rakhiye ga, ke effectively join emotions and reasoning, that is the point, jis ke upar followers ka agreement, wo hona zaruri hai. And when we, start, when we talk about emotional involvement, the emotions should be raised there to facilitate the reasoning and the reasoning intelligently about emotions. Ye bhi zaruri ho ka. Jazbaat ko aisa saath ke saath, aisa saath ko aapki soch ke saath, aapki soch ko jazbaat ke saath, ye ek aapko pura ek amalgamation jo hai, wo banani padegi. Another important thing in emotional intelligence, ko hum social intelligence ke andar bhi cover karenge, that would be managing culture is like managing emotions. And unless or until the leader is intelligent enough to understand the followers' emotions, us wakat tak wo vaha par psychodynamic perspective ko madhe nazar rakhte huye, apni efficiency or effectiveness demonstrate wo nahi kar sakta. Likewise, leader should always be there to bring the self-efficacy among the followers. Or jab hum self-efficacy ki baat karte hain, jisko hum urdu mein khud afadiyat ka naam dete hain, to yaad rakhye ka ke is baare mein, jo Branda ka model hai basically self-efficacy ka, she talked about personal mastery, vicarious modeling, verbal persuasion, emotional and psychological states. Lekin, is perspective mein, jab aapke author ne is uh, term ko use kiya, psychodynamic perspective mein, he talked about successful experiences, coaching and encouragement, managing psychological states and emotional threats of failure, and obviously vicarious modeling. And as you can see on the slide, when we talk about vicarious modeling, uh, it means that people similar oneself succeed by sustained effort raises observers belief that they too possesses the capabilities to master comparable activities to succeed. Or we can also say that experience in the imagination through the feelings of other person's actions into your own personal context. So, ab in tamam cheezon ke baghair, when once we are not able to demonstrate that yes, I can do it, us wakat tak aapka jo context hai to be a true leader, wo ho ni paega. It would be there when the cat is able to see the mirror image of a lion. That is the time when you are able to come up with the true energy, the true enthusiasm, jiske baghair organizational perspective mein move karna aapke liye difficult hoga. Likewise, jab hum baat karte hai psychodynamic approach to uh, leadership development ki, us mein, it is said uh, that know thyself is the rule. Ke self-awareness ke baghair aap incomplete leader banoge. As Pythagoras once said that man who know thyself, then thou shalt know the universe and the God. So, apni zaat mein, apne aap ko explore karna, apne aap ko janna, is leadership mantra ko samajna, iske baghair cheezein na kafi hongi, incomplete hongi. In addition to that, you also need to know ke aapke family and cultural background kya hai, because cultural sensitivity wo bohat important hai aapke liye samajni, janni aur manni. Isi tarah aapke early life experiences, jo actually aapko shape up kar rahe hain, aapke critical events of life, aapke accidents and incidents of life, ye tamam wo cheeze hain jo contribute kar rahi hain leader ke liye bhi aur follower ke liye bhi. Aur in tamam cheezon ko madde nazar rakhe baghair, na aap mindful ho sakoge, aur na aap true leader ki shakal mein, ek true follower ki shakal mein, wo apna izhar wo kar paoge. Likewise, jab hum leadership development ki baat karte hain, to as a leader, 
आपको अपने पॉइंट्स ऑफ डिफरेंसेस भी बयान करने हैं और आपको अपने यूनिक सेलिंग पॉइंट्स भी बताने हैं आपको अपने आप को डिफ्रेंशिएट करना है इसी के साथ साथ आपको अपना एक सोशल नेटवर्क स्टैब्लिश करना है जिसमें आपकी इंटीग्रेशन जो है वो तमाम लोगों के साथ यकसुई के साथ हो आपको सेल्फ नॉलेज एंड सेल्फ इनसाइट फ्लॉज का पता होना चाहिए कि कहाँ कहाँ पर क्या क्या कमियाँ आपके साथ व्यवस्था हैं कौन कौन से कंडीशन एंड कंस्ट्रेंट्स आपके साथ व्यवस्था है नेवर एवर ट्राई टू इमेजिन योर सेल्फ इन सुपरलेटिव एक्सप्रेशन Neither you should be there to underestimate yourself, nor you should be there to overestimate yourself. और ये सब कुछ तभी हो पाएगा when you have got the 360 degree feedback surveys, when you are involved in action learning. इसी तरह आपका जब clinically oriented leadership की हम बात करते हैं तो group dynamics को समझना पियर प्रेशर को अंडरस्टैंड करना बिहेवियरल चेंजेस को जानना और मानना ये सब जरूरी होगा आपको पता होना चाहिए कि हाउ टू इम्प्रूव द एम्प्लॉयबिलिटी एंड हाउ टू प्रोमोट द प्रोमोटेबिलिटी जब तक आप इम्प्लॉज में इन चीजों को इनकलकेट नहीं करेंगे सो उनका कैरियर प्रोग्रेशन उनकी डेवलपमेंट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन फैसिलिटी में वो नहीं हो पाएगी देर फोर आपको एक इमोशनल एंड सोशल बॉन्ड वो क्रिएट करना है अपने फॉलोअर्स के साथ वाइल एट द सेम टाइम यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड दर साइको logical development you need to understand their history you need to understand their needs and wants and you need to respect them without that it would be difficult for you to bring about a true change which is actually required by the organization likewise psychodynamic approach mein jab hum coaching and consultation ki baat karte hain to remember ke focus on symptoms not causes आपको बड़ा ग्रास रूट लेवल पे जाकर चीजों को अंडरस्टैंड करना पड़ेगा आपको क्विक फिक्सेस की बजाय डेवलपमेंटल चेंज की तरफ जाना पड़ेगा विच इज लॉन्गर टर्म परस्पेक्टिव आपको फोकस इंटरवेंशन के साथ काम करना है बिकॉज अनलेस एंड अनटिल यू आर नॉट फोकस्ड एंड यू आर नॉट डिजाइनिंग द प्रॉपर इंटरवेंशन इट वुड डिफिकल्ट इट वुड बी डिफिकल्ट फॉर द पीपल टू गेट योर पॉइंट दैट हाउ यू आर देयर टू प्रोग्रेस इस मकसद के लिए जब हम क्लिनिकली इनफॉर्म कंसल्टेंट्स की बात कर रहे हैं चाहे वो ऑर्गेनाइजेशन डेवलपमेंट कंसल्टेंट से क्यों ना हो यू हैव टू डिस्प्ले अप्रोप्रिएट इमोशंस अपने जज्बात पर एहसास पर काबू रखना है आपको इमोशनल लेबर में जाना है आपको सेल्फ अवेयरनेस के साथ अपनी बातों को लेकर चलना है आपको प्रोजेक्टिव आइडेंटिफिकेशन जितने भी हमारे पास इस तरह के एक्सप्रेशन हैं जो कि सेल्फ डेमोन्स्ट्रेशन के लिए जरूरी हैं इन सब को मद्देनजर रखना वो जरूरी होगा एंड देन यू ऑब्वियसली देयर टू क्रिएट अ ट्रू मीनिंग अ मीनिंग विच इज अंडरस्टूड बाई द फॉलोअर्स और उसके लिए थेमेटिक यूनिटी का होना सब लोगों का एक पॉइंट में मुतफ होना वो जरूरी है लाइक वाइज क्लिनिकली इनफॉर्म कंसल्टेंट्स की जब हम बात करते हैं तो यू शुड बी अटेंटिव टू द हिडन एजेंडाज ये दोनों केसेज में है फॉलोअर एंड लीडर दोनों केसेज में अवेयर ऑफ कॉम्प्लेक्स साइकोलॉजिकल रेजिस्टेंस एंड ऑब्वियसली मैं बार बार इस बात पर एम्फोसिस कर रहा हूँ कि यू शुड बी देयर टू इंस्टिल सेल्फ रिन्यूअल कैपेबिलिटी सो ट्राई टू फाइंड द लीडर विद इन योर सेल्फ ट्राई टू फाइंड द लीडर एमंग अवर सेल्फ okay so i am that is the self efficacy you need to come up with at the end of the like uh, article uh, the author is talking about certain leadership challenges and the future trends we are going to face we have to see a corporate cultures wo kaise establish kar rahe hain family businesses ke kya uh, challenges hain organization ko kin kis kis kisam ke stress ka samna wo karna pad raha hai किस किस्म के स्कैंडल्स ऑर्गेनाइजेशन कॉन्टेक्स में स्टैब्लिश कर पाते हैं कैरियर डायनामिक्स कैसे डेवलप कर रहे हैं ग्रुप बिहेवियर्स उनके क्या चैलेंजेस हैं और ऑब्वियसली ऑर्गेनाइजेशनल चेंजेस को हम किस तरीके से बेटर इनकॉर्पोरेट वो कर सकते हैं सो देयर फोर साइको डायनामिक रिफ्लेक्शन के तौर पर आपको उस डिजोनेंस को होने से रोकना है जो कि डिफरेंस क्रिएट कर रहा है बिटवीन सेंग एंड डूइंग आपको अलाइनमेंट करनी है बिटवीन थेरी एंड प्रैक्टिस और आपको इमोशनली इंटेलिजेंस इमोशनल इंटेलिजेंस डेमोन्स्ट्रेट करनी है जिसके बगैर आपके लिए इन तमाम परस्पेक्टिव को अंडरस्टैंड करना वो रिलेटिवली डिफिकल्ट होगा लास्ट बट नॉट द लीस्ट जो मुस्तबिल है हमारे पास वो मुस्तबिल बात कर रहा है ऑथेंटिकोटिक ऑर्गेनाइजेशन के बारे में अब ये ऑथेंटिकोटिक इज बेसिकली द कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ टू वर्ड ऑथेंटिकोस विच मीन्स दैट ऑथेंटिक विजनरी मिशन के साथ कल्चरल परस्पेक्टिव को मद्देनजर रखकर स्ट्रक्चरल परस्पेक्टिव को मद्देनजर रखकर आप वहां पर ऑपरेट कर रहे हो एंड जोटिक ऑस वुड मीन वाइटल टू लाइफ विच इज रिलेटेड टू द पर्सनल होलनेस सेल्फ कंप्लीशन एंड टू बी अलाइव तो जब ये ऑथेंटिकॉस एंड जोटिकॉस दे कंबाइन टूगेदर तो हमारे पास जो आइंदा दौर में जो आईने वाले मुस्तबिल में इस न्यू नॉर्मल में जिन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन की हमें जरूरत है दे आर द ऑथेंटिक जोटिक ऑर्गेनाइजेशन वेयर देयर वुड बी वर्क लाइफ बैलेंस वेयर देयर वुड बी रियलिस्टिक and enduring interventions rather than rather than just suffering from idealistic perspectives that basically concludes our discussion about the article and now i'll be there to uh, discuss with you the question answers